Hey everyone, welcome to week 25. We're super happy to be back, by the way. Uh, this week is going to be about sacrifices and what we're going to sacrifice is going to be detail. So we're going to be only thinking about the bigness of the picture. So let's see how we do. Super happy to be back. Okay, let's get started. First of all, thank you everyone for the super nice comments when you read that I had a stomach bug and that was the reason that we couldn't do videos last week. Honestly, the one time before this that we didn't do videos was because I was abroad teaching a workshop and it is very difficult for me to try and do uh, the two things at the same time. Usually the workshops that I do, if they are five-day workshops, they are super, super draining and my mind and my body and all my energy are all in that workshop. So for me to try and do a workshop to then record myself or having done paintings prior to uh, the workshop and then doing VO work to send to Danny to then edit the videos um, during my workshop would be so, so difficult that it just doesn't quite make sense for me. So this was a thing where I was just, I don't know, I caught something and... I was just feeling really crappy and low energy and uh, I just knew that I couldn't do uh, the videos properly. So super, super nice uh, comments from you guys. Thank you so, so much. But now we're back in the saddle. We're, we're doing this and we're uh, really, really glad to be back because I was talking about this yesterday, but there is something to be said about having a kind of constant in your life, this thing that gives you consistency, this ritual that you do every single day. And for both Danny and I, even though this is a ton of work because it does take up the whole of our day, if you would come into our apartment, you know, whatever day of the week, uh, you would probably see us either painting or, you know, Danny editing or me doing VO work and editing the VO work, but we would always be just doing something that has to do with our channel, with our work. So it has become kind of like an integral part of, of what we do. And it's kind of awesome for us because we we started doing this, we, we had been together for like three and a half years, but we decided to move in together and we started doing this maybe four months after we moved in together. So basically, we just always see each other. We're always together, always. And it's cool because, you know, you would think that this would be something weird for our relationship. But honestly, we are like super best friends and we both pour our hearts into what we do. So for us to hang out together and do this, it just kind of seems right. And we have a ton of fun. I mean, it is a ton of work, but we find little things that make it super enjoyable and we make fun of it and we make fun of ourselves too. It was a well needed rest, I guess, but uh, <laughs> we also miss working and we miss doing this and it gives um, a ton of purpose to our day and it just fills you with energy. And, you know, it's it's almost like a little trip to the unknown because we don't know what the videos are going to look like. We don't know what the paintings are going to look like. We pretty much make it up as we go along. I mean, this is not a bad thing. We're just super, super open to learning from each of our weeks and then trying to adjust things in the next week. So we use it almost like uh, as if we're building like a ladder, like a staircase. We can't plan this. We can't over plan this. If anything, this year has taught us that we can't over plan anything. So anyways, that was just a quick little aside to tell you guys that we're super happy to be back and we are very grateful for your comments because you guys are really, really caring and kind with every comment that you leave us. There were even people that were writing emails saying, wow, is, is there something wrong with you guys? Like, this is like a ritual for me too that I wake up, you know, every weekday and I know that your video is going to be there and it's kind of weird to not see the videos. That actually gives us a ton of strength and a ton of energy to keep doing what we do. Just knowing that there's people out there that wait for these videos and you know that these moments have meaning to them, th that's awesome. That's super, super nice. So on behalf of Danny and myself, we really are super grateful to you guys. For this week, for this week, this new, um, this new theme, our comeback, we thought it would be cool to do something that, uh, again, it's kind of abstract. And I thought I could call this week uh, squinting. You know, I thought I could just think about squinting and just the act of squinting. But then I realized, yeah, it could be about squinting, but 
in essence, squinting is about making sacrifices. So we're going to call this week sacrifices. Specifically, what we're going to sacrifice is just little information that we don't need. Now, on past weeks, we were trying to balance the part with the whole. We weren't avoiding trying to do detail. We weren't really saying, okay, I've already done my blocking. I have a good sense of the wholeness of the image. Now I'm going to stop. No. We actually said, okay, now we're going to try to develop little bits of information that are specific and we're going to try to see if those specifics, if those particulars answer to the whole, to the idea of the whole, to the wholeness, to the integral quality of the image. And we were trying to balance those out and it's a great exercise. Honestly, I think that every single great painting that you know, exists out there, is able to achieve that beautiful balance between wholeness and between the parts that compose the whole. For this week, we are going to sacrifice those parts. Not to say that we're just going to do a block in and then call it quits. Like, okay, just quit while you're ahead. If it looks good with two brush strokes, just leave it at that. That's it. Goodbye. No, no, no. It just means that we are going to not feel the need to express the idea that we're going to try to convey through the specifics of our image. So we're going to try to express it through bigness, even though details are very, very attractive because they are, you know, we absolutely love details. We're enamored by the tiniest little part that makes up the whole. And this is not just about painting. This is everywhere. This is in life. We just love minutia. We just love to stare at tiny little things. That is something that's almost like instinctual. It's almost like our brain wants to dig in and understand, you know, all the makeup of things. And that's why one of the hardest things that we have to teach our brain and in our eye, our mind's eye to do is to understand wholeness. You know, the bigness of things. That's one of the toughest things to do because it almost goes against the very nature of us as human beings, the way we observe things. So that's why that first step when you tell people just, you know, go for big ideas, big ideas of a massive light and a massive shadow, just go for those. That's something that's very tough for people and it takes time and it makes sense. It just makes total sense when you realize that our nature probably doesn't rely upon just being aware of big, big qualities of things. No, we actually hone in on things. That, that's what we do. So what I thought would be cool to do during this week is to just really, really concentrate on wholeness. And because we're concentrating on wholeness, we are making sacrifices. And we are going to be very much so aware of those things that we are sacrificing. If we love little brushes, if we love little details, if we love to like, you know, get really close to our painting and model the crap out of little tiny things that are insignificant, we're not going to do that during this week. We are going to put that aside. And again, if you love to do that, don't worry. It's not like you're going to forget it. No, no, no. We're just going to put it aside and grant ourselves the time to concentrate on bigger aspects of painting during this week. The exercise that I propose to you guys and the one that I'm going to do is just squint. You're always going to hear it when you're working from life. If you go to a drawing workshop where you have, you know, these wonderful models posing for you, you're always going to hear people say squint, squint. And specifically if you're modeling form, if you're doing like you know, one minute gesture drawings, you know, you don't have to squint. You just have to draw really quickly. This has to do with form, with understanding the wholeness of form, the modeling of form, with how a body is part of a space, belongs to a specific space, occupies a space. So the relationship between the space that the uh, body is inhabiting and the body itself, th those bigger relationships, we can actually get a firm grasp on them when we squint. So if we're drawing that, if we're drawing those volumes, or if we're painting from life, be it at a studio, if we're painting a model, or if we're painting outside, squinting is just, you know, the most wonderful exercise that we could ever do. Now, this is something that they don't tell you. You can actually squint when you're working with a photograph. It's totally normal for you to squint at a photograph. It doesn't look weird. I mean, it kind of looks stupid, but it doesn't mean that you're doing anything that's completely off, but you can squint at your photograph. So what I usually do is that I squint at my photos. And this actually goes back, this is a throwback to something that I used to do when I was painting like 20 years ago. It was obviously customary to have reference and especially when you were doing illustration, you, you would have to have reference because truth is 
only so many people were just completely amazing in working from their imagination. But for most of us, we needed reference. And I still do. I think I can do a pretty good job from my imagination. Not great, but uh, I still need some reference. And a lot of people that would work on large paintings, let's say, you would go to Kinko's and you would just print these enlargements of your photographs and you would have those because the, the more you could see from a photograph, then the better. And I actually thought, well, one, that's super expensive. And two, I'm totally fine with just regular prints, with just regular sized prints, even the small size prints of my reference. When I would just shoot a roll of film, I would have the small photos developed and printed because I thought that that would give me a better idea of wholeness if I just didn't feel this obligation to then go and blow something up at a colored copier or just have the photo place just print an enlargement. I always thought, no, you know, I'm totally fine with this small picture just giving me everything that I need to know and I'm going to try to translate that into a big painting. So I always used these small size photographs. I think they were what, four by six maybe? Yeah, maybe four by six. I would always use photos that were that size. I would never go bigger. Even today, a lot of you guys ask what I use for reference and I do use photos that I myself take. I used to have like an old iPad, like an iPad one, which is like a brick. Um, it's, it's useless by now. But I use that, even though it has like a kind of crappy screen. And now I just use my phone. Honestly, I just paint from my phone. And I have this tiny picture that I look at and I like it. I actually really, really like it. I like the fact that I can't make up all the information that is there. And even though I can't access the smallness, the small aspects of that image, I can actually get an incredibly uh, sensible idea of the wholeness of it even though it is a tiny image it is very very small even when compared to a 4 by 6 print from 20 years ago I actually even squint at my phone when I'm working from my phone and I actually feel that that's a terrific practice and granted yes if I want to take a painting further I could just you know zoom into that picture and look at the part but I'm usually very, very conscious of how lost I can get if I start zooming into um, pieces of my painting. A lot of people can have one-to-one -one reproductions of what they're painting, and they can zoom into like particular areas if they're doing paintings that are larger than life, let's say, and they help themselves technically by pre-mixing color. So if you pre-mix color and if you already know which colors are gonna go in which areas, then you don't get lost. Then you can blow you know, anything up and if you just say, okay, now I have to use my brown one, two, and three and my brown red one, two, and three, whatever it is, you know, I'm just saying, you know, dumb color names. But if I stick to those colors, I know that I can work within the rules that I've already established for myself when working towards the wholeness of the picture. So in essence, what we're gonna try to do this week is be aware of those sacrifices that we are going to make because, you know, during this week, and honestly, that's what we've been doing every single week. Every single week we gain something, but we sacrifice something else. We're working towards something and for something, but in doing so, we are actually putting a ton of other variables aside. So we always, always make sacrifices. We can't just make a perfect painting, you know, an absolutely perfect painting. No, we always leave something behind when we try to enhance and emphasize something else. So for this week, we are putting aside detail. We're putting aside the small bits of information. We're going to try and tell those gorgeous little details that are begging for our attention to go to sleep, to just shut up. We're not going to pay attention to them during this week. We're just going to see bigness. Bigness and hopefully... By seeing bigness, we're going to just see the wholeness, you know, an image that's full of atmosphere, full of air, full of variables that are affecting each other in just very palpable ways. You can see the effect one thing has over the other. Big, big relationships. Hopefully, bigger brushes. It doesn't have to be that way. You know, I actually am going to use some uh, bristle brushes. I actually have a round that is in horrible shape. I've been using it on this painting of Danny, but... Uh, it is in terrible shape in the sense that it just doesn't have a shape. It's just super splayed by now. It is one of those brushes that I've given a haircut. I know, I know, that's blasphemy. But because I've altered the shape of that brush, 
now that I've beat the crap out of it, it just can't hold, you know, whatever shape it held at the beginning, now it just can't hold anything. It's falling apart. But I love it. I love it because it is wild. It is like feral. It is a feral brush. It'll just do whatever it wants, you know. It'll just go places that I don't understand. And it'll kind of scratch the surface. It's kind of growling while I'm painting. And I love that. I actually absolutely love that. There's people that see a brush like that and they faint. And they go like, oh my God, this is a completely useless tool. I actually think it's a wonderful tool. So it's not for everyone. That is the first thing that I'm gonna say. Doing what I do is not for everyone. That is very, very clear. There's people out there that just absolutely need and love and adore new brushes. And they have to buy you know, brushes every two or three paintings because when you paint and if particularly if you're scrubbing, if you don't have like a pristine, beautiful surface and if you're using solvent, let's say, to clean your brush, you know, whatever solvent it may be, that's going to beat up your brush. You know, that's, that's going to take a toll on your brush. But there's people that just love perfect shaped brushes. And there are people, I'm going to say that too, that take insane care of their brushes. And that's amazing. That's incredible. That's totally commendable. Hats off to all of you guys. That's not me, honestly. That's not what happens with me. I got used to buying a ton of cheap brushes. So I didn't really care that much if they got beat up or if they got deformed or splayed. I just pretty much just kept the ugly ones and kept painting and kept painting until I got like a nub. Then I would buy more. But that just works for me. You know, you have to find whatever works for you guys. If you love your brushes and if they are these beautiful, precious tools for you and you really take care of them and it's almost like a ritual for you to take care of them, oh, please, by all means, do that. I'm not saying that you have to beat the crap out of your brush. By no means. Because I'm using somewhat irregular brushes, I am almost conditioning myself to not want to go for small detail because, you know, I can't. I can't ask of an irregular tool to behave like a really fine brush. It's not going to happen. So if I try to get like this tiny little highlight on the tip of the uh, nose with a brush that just goes anywhere, then I'm going to get frustrated and I'm going to feel like, oh my God, it's, this is so stupid. No, no, no. What I want by putting these parameters for myself is to say, okay, my tools are telling me and my intent is telling me to not care about those things. So I have to be one with that intent, one with my tools and say, okay, if I'm not able to achieve those things through my materials, I don't want to fight them and I don't want to become frustrated. No, I want to accept it and I want to say, okay, let me not concentrate on what I can't do. Let me see what I can do and let me emphasize those things. Let me showcase those things that I can do and let me try to do those things well. Because I think that in painting many times and in life, we actually yearn for the things that we don't have while we turn a blind eye to the things that we actually have. So instead of celebrating what we can do, we are yearning for the things that we can't do. And this is one of those cases that we have to convince ourselves that no, we're actually gonna go for big things. We're gonna squint at our small picture or we're gonna squint if we're working for life and squint at our painting too. By the way, this is also true. Just squint at whatever you're looking at but don't go to your paintings and open those eyes, like huge eyes. No, you squint at your reference, you squint at nature, you squint at your palette, you squint at your painting, and you're gonna try to go for bigness, really, really big qualities that you see in that reference, that you see in nature, and that's all we want. We want this idea of wholeness. We want to sacrifice those tiny little pesky details that can betray us so, so easily. Damn details. So we're going to put those aside for this week. So that was it for today. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for all your wishes. You know, I wasn't feeling that bad. I mean, it was bad. I had like a really crappy stomach ache for the whole of the week. It just felt like ugh, debilitating. When you have like a crappy ass uh, stomach ache, you just can't do anything. You're always thinking that your stomach's hurting and you feel bloated and you feel horrible. So ugh, I knew that I couldn't paint. I mean, if you were to force me, I probably could have painted, but it was pointless to do it, honestly. So again, thank you guys so much. 
Uh, we're super, super happy to be back and super happy to actually do it in this fashion where we are back and we come, you know, full strength, full power, but, <laughs> but we're conscious of making sacrifices. So this week is about bigness. Goodbye details. See you later. We'll see you back again in a week. But for this week, we're going to try to um, paint bigness. Oh, and by the way, um, I think that for four of the five days, four out of the five days that we're going to paint this week, I'm going to go back to my moleskin. I'm going to go back to painting on paper because for the longest time I put it aside and I was painting, let's see, I painted on uh, synthetic sheets on those Yupo sheets, which were kind of weird, but I, you know, I eventually ended up liking them. And I painted on Yupo also for the uh, gouache, for some of the gouache paintings, but I also painted on, on paper, on that Pink Pig uh, paper, which is fantastic. You know, shout out to those guys again. They do an amazing job. They're a small company, lovely paper, brilliant guys. So I don't mind just uh, giving them a shout out. So we use that paper. And lately I've been using a ton of uh, pre-primed, not oil primed, it's pre-primed, I guess, universal. When they say universal primer, they mean an acrylic primer, which is, you know, pretty much gesso. Um, linen, and it's been weird, I would say. Um, I think this is one of those linens that is actually pretty wonderful if you paint, you know, two, three layers of paint, maybe. It's like, it's absolutely beautiful, and it receives paint quite wonderfully when it has some paint on it. So I've had to adjust and had to learn how to work with it when I'm trying to do these Alla Prima paintings. And one of the ways that I realized that I could adjust to achieve some brightness or brilliance in the paint was to scrape. And I noticed that some of you even pointed out that it's like, oh, hey, dude, why are you scraping so much? Like, why are you using that spatula, your palette knife so much? And honestly, it's just a way to adjust. It's just a way to answer back to the qualities of you know, whatever surface you're working on. And my substrate was asking this of me. This is not, you know, me just kind of saying, hey, I paint this way and I'm going to impose my manner of working onto whichever substrate you give me. You know, you could give me a piece of rock and I'm going to paint the same way. No, no. You know, the reality is every surface has their own kind of personality. And being a really open, flexible painter means that you have to be kind of almost one with that surface and understand what it is asking of you and not just say, hey, dude, you know, I paint this way, so I'm sorry, I'm just going to impose myself over you. No. So that was just me trying to find a way to have kinship with my materials. We go back to paper. Paper behaves very, very differently, so I can be far more direct. The paint just kind of sits on top of the paper really, really nicely, and I like that. I actually like that. The paintings look different, but I always tell people, like, fundamentally, the act of painting is exactly the same. The difference is that I have to make adjustments. That's about it. But for me, that's something that I, I enjoy tremendously, just seeing how I can adapt you know, given the qualities and the uh, characteristics of the surface that I'm working on. So we're going back to paper, but, but I also found like an old painting <laughs> that I had and I cut it to size and I think we're going to use that old painting as a surface for uh, one of the days during the week. So it's going to be paper for four days and linen with an old painting for one of those days for the remaining day. So it's probably going to be Friday, maybe. So this week, sacrifices, that's what we're going to do. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Remember, brush up on your Spanish. It's uh, Spanish Tuesdays, Marte de Español. So hope to see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Glad to be back.